Hello, and welcome to the first video in a series of walks on the Isle of Skye in the Black Coolin. There are 12 Monroes on Skye. They are unique and unlike any other mountains on the mainland. The rough gabbro rock, remnants of an eroded magma chamber that was once part of a huge volcano, contains a high iron content, making compasses unusable. Gabbro is like a very rough sandpaper, and you notice your boots and your hands be worn away. At times it can be extremely sharp like flint. There are many cliffs, lots of vertical rock and steep boulder fields on Skye, a mountaineering playground. Unfortunately, maps of the area are limited in the detail they show and even with the latest maps and the latest GPS devices, there will be times when you'll have great difficulty knowing which way to go. There are probably 4 of the 12 Monroes that are easier to both navigate and walk up. Almost all of them will require some hands on the rock. In saying that, I'm going to start with one of the easier walks, Blavin. Blavin, which stands alone and offers an amazing view of the entire Coolin Ridge. The ridge is over 11 kilometres long and is made up of 11 Monroes. The total distance for today's walk is 8 kilometres, with 941 metres of ascent. In summer conditions, it is expected to take around 3 hours and 35 minutes to walk. Parking is at the Blavin Car Park. Parking is free. There are no height restrictions, you can probably fit around 30 cars, and there is a toilet at the car park. It's around 4 hours and 40 minutes drive from Glasgow, or 5 hours from Edinburgh. From the car park, you're going to head north a little bit out of the car park, and then it bends round to the right and takes you back down to the road that you drove in on. You're going to cross over the bridge. Once you cross the bridge, you're going to turn immediately to your left and follow a very clear and well-defined path. You're heading west at this point. You follow that path, it's very clear, continue to follow that, you're going to cross over the stream around about here and then it's going to bend round to your left. You'll cross another little stream here and it's probably a good point to fill up with water. You continue up this slope, it gets a bit steeper but nothing difficult at this point. And then the path splits here, you can go either way, probably best to go straight ahead keeping to your right. When it comes to this point, you can see there's another path up here and I think I took that route the last time and I think it involved some pretty good scrambling. I was expecting there to be a whole section of scrambling on the walk and I made reference to that in the video but I never came across it so I'm assuming it's somewhere on this side here. This path up here goes up quite a big scree stone shoot, very similar to what you have on Skur Alastair but much shorter. Follow the path, turn to your right. This section here is a little bit vague it's not the most clear section until you get to this point. Once you're on the path here, the path is pretty clear and obvious all the way to the summit. But this bit just here where you turn round is not the most obvious. There is a scree slope to go up. You are turning away when you can look up here. It looks like that might be an inviting way to go. It's more direct to the top, but you want to go back in yourself. You'll go up through this stone shoot I talk about, and then from there you just continue on. Keep heading up. You're going to get quite close to the edge here. You do not need to go right next to the edge, but you can go and have a look over the edge and there's a big drop, large cliffs and a nice view out across this ridge over here. You're going to go up a little bit further and I think it's somewhere around about here. There's just a little bit of scrambling required. The path splits off into two. You can go more to your right, which is what I did on the ascent, or you can go more straight ahead and then go up to the right, which is what I did on the descent. Either way, there's just a little bit of scrambling, nothing too difficult. After that, it's a straightforward walk up to the summit, bends back to the right, and then you'll make it to the summit. I'll zoom out a little bit from the summit of Blavin. And so directly to the west, you've got the full cooling ridge starting with Skur Nan Gigan at the northern end and going all the way down to Skur Nan Eich at the southern end. It is possible to head off to the southwest, follow this path down the ridge. There's a, a drop down here back up the other side and then as long as you make the turn to your left at this point you could go down this ridge. I've never taken this route and I don't know how difficult that route is. You can just see there is an obvious path there. When you're at this point, you can see a cairn up here and you can see the wear in this section where people have taken that path. Not knowing what that would be like, I simply retraced my steps, took what I deemed to be the safest route back down off the mountain. So you come back down, scramble down that slight little down climb and then follow the path round. In the video, I actually went a little bit closer to the edge here and then to about here and then went back across and went down the stone shoot. I was just having a look to see if any of that section I scrambled up in the past was obvious and I didn't want to down climb that. I don't think I did it the last time either. So going down the scree section, it's not difficult. You just need to take your time and make your way back down. 
follow the path round to your left and then descend down all the way back down across that stream again and just follow the path there's no junctions or alternate routes that you could take on the way down you just simply go all the way back down until you make it back down to the road cross the bridge and immediately after the bridge turn to your right and then follow the path back into the car park good morning it's 8 30 in the morning a glorious day i'm at the car park for the start of the walk for blavin and there's the summit directly ahead. There's a little visitor notice board and a toilet at the car park. From the car park, you just follow this path. It goes north, but it goes back down to the main road to cross the river. Once you cross the river, turn to your left, follow the path. We take us all the way up. path goes up there right in the centre of the frame and it goes round the back of this outcrop that's in the centre now and then you turn and bend, go up to the right, you've got Blavin. It's just taking me 10 minutes to put my boots on, get my bag packed. So you come to the north end of the car park and there's a walk-in sign here. Just follow this path out. You come back down to the road, cross the bridge, and then turn left and follow the gravel trail. It's on the other side of the river. The wind's picked up a little bit. It's not meant to be very windy today. Sort of maximum 10 miles per hour. This is a good path, it's easy to follow, gravel path, well made. Now we're going up the side of this little stream, this gully here, it does start to get a bit steeper. Still got a very good path to follow, not difficult. That will change once we get onto the mountain proper. At this point the path splits, the more obvious one is straight ahead, we want to go up to the right a little bit. If you do go straight ahead you'll come to a junction where you go left or right anyway and it's obvious to go to the right, so you'll join up to the same path. Once you see that big block, we're going to turn to the right 
I'm going to go to the scree section. Seems to be a fair amount of wear there and just not work my way up. And straight away at the start of the scree there's a cairn. So it looks like we're going the right way. It now curves back round to the right. Looks like it's going up straight ahead. Yeah, it's very difficult to make out the path from any distance. You just have to follow the wear signs on the ground. There's a fair bit of scree here. I did have some very slight scrambling to go up the right hand side as you ascend. A little bit less loose rock. Keeps going up here a little bit. Nothing as bad as the stone shoot on Skur Alastair. <laughs> Eventually, you'll come out at the top of that scree section. Looks like the path gets a bit easier for a little bit, but straight ahead for a wee while, and it'll start to bend off to the left. An hour and 50 minutes into the walk, about 750 metres altitude, a little bit of light cloud coming in. Yeah, you just come around the corner there and all of a sudden you get some serious vertigo. Good news is you don't need to go near the edge if you don't want to. Just looking back down where I've come up from, you come to this gap here on your right and the path goes straight up, up this groove, just up the centre there. It's about 100 metres straight ahead, then the path bends round to the right. It's only about 200 metres distance to the summit. On the summit of Blavin. Ah, oh, what a special day this is. I 
That was a lot easier than the route I did last time. On the way up last time, I must have went a little bit too far to the right, too close to the cliffs. I was doing a fair amount of scrambling up some pretty steep, rocky sections. But if you keep to the left, it's just a big walk. There's some massive drops just here to the sort of northeast. There is a route that goes along that ridge. I tried it many years ago, but I couldn't find the path. And I actually end up descending down the west side and I had to walk all the way around. Now this is probably the best viewpoint of the Coolin Ridge from anywhere. But as you can see, there's a lot of wispy cloud on the ridge at the moment. So to the very northern end of the Coolin Ridge, Skur Nangigian. The end pin, Skur Jerig, is clear. You can just make out the shark fin. And the highest of the Coolin, Skur Alastair, Pointy Peak. And then the southern two, which I can never remember the names of. Very difficult to navigate. I think we'll try school hours there later in the week. As long as it's clear. It's so actually, you can climb that one in the clouds. It's quite easy to navigate. That and this one are the two easiest of the coolings from that perspective. It's the first time I've had a view from the top of Blavin. It's only the second time I've made it to the top. My first attempt was about 20 years ago. I never got here. But I was trying a different route and it was a bit too difficult. The wind's been almost non-existent but it's picked up a little bit now. Comes and goes. See how much we can zoom in on the end pin on the phone. And there's school Alice there. That one there is also quite uneasy. Monroe to climb. There's one section on the way up to a lock and that you do have to scramble. But after that it's not too difficult. But you usually try and do that with this one here and that one is the route finding can be very difficult. Totally calm, no, not even a breeze. I've been making a little time lapse of the cooling ridge whilst I've been sitting here having my sandwich. So I'll play that. Hopefully, it comes out well.
been so preoccupied with the Coolin Ridge, I've not done the panorama to the south and the east. Looking back across the mainland Scotland. I certainly picked a good spot for the walk today. So from the summit, I'm going to retrace my steps. So it's almost directly east. It's just very slightly south of direct east. Go back down to the edge of that steep cliff side, following the gravel path that I took on the way up. I'm going to keep it nice and simple. It's a real shame to be leaving the summit. It's a really nice day for it up here. came up that way. I pointed out earlier there's a gap in the right as you're coming up. I'm going to have a look. There's a well-worn path down this side. There was just a little tiny scrambling section there. Actually the most difficult bit of scrambling and it wasn't difficult but there was a little bit there that you had to properly hold on and pull yourself up. So I'm going to see if going around to the right around this outcrop here just avoids that. There's a very little bit to down climb there, maybe slightly easier than the other side, much the same to be honest. And this just joins back up to the path I went up, I went up that groove up there. Either way, both fairly straightforward. So on the descent there, I came down more to the left as you look back up, but when I ascended, I went up this path I've crossed back onto, which was closer to the edge. That path's okay, but I don't know if it goes down a different route to the one I ascended. And I like to just go up and down the same way because then you know what you're going to come across. So I'm just gonna go back down the same way I went up. So from being too far to the right, I'm now too far to the left. I'm too close to that cliff. There's a path here, so I'll follow the path, but I want to try and get a little bit more to the middle. Once I get to that scree gully, then I'll know I'm in the right place. Looks like the top of that gully is just there. This is one of the challenges in the cooling. It's difficult to recognise the terrain on the descent. It looks totally different to how it did on the way up. And with the steepness, I've had a couple of times where I've been descending, thinking I'm going the right way, only to then check your position on the GPS, or just realise if you look back up and it doesn't look anything like what you saw on your ascent, You've taken a wrong turn. This looks like the top of the scree slope, so that should be okay from here. It's quite steep, easy to slip and easy to trip on this stuff on the descent.
that little stone shoot is easily the most difficult part of the walk. A little bit I scrambled very slightly just to avoid such steep drop. Now we just zigzag back down. Yeah, probably to where those people are. There are multiple routes up here, so as long as it's well worn, we should be okay. But I would keep away from the far right on the ascent. That's probably, I think that's where I went last time and had a fair bit of scrambling to do. Back down where you can see that big block and the path turns to the left, but it's very obvious. Just keep following the scree. We'll soon be down to the main path off the mountain. And that's it, follow that all the way back down to the car park. Earlier on I mentioned the path splitted and you could come straight up, so I've just come to the top of the other path, which goes down there. Those people are on the path I took earlier. The wind's picking up. That's quite pleasant at this point in the day. So when you come to here, you can just see the little lock in the head. You turn to your left and just follow the path out, heading north. me back down to the road. Just got to turn to the right, watch out for the traffic, single track road, cross the bridge and then turn right again and that takes you back into the car park. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Nice to get some stunning views today. You can see Blavin still clear up there. Total walking time was about four hours. It's been four and a half hours since I left the car park and I sat around at the top for quite a while enjoying the view. Thanks for watching and bye for now.